Do you have an idea for a service that you want to turn into a business, but then you feel all the self doubt in wondering if it's profitable and whether or not you should be pursuing it. Well, as a small business strategist that has helped hundreds of people start their first businesses, I can tell you that there are three major steps that most people miss when it comes to validating their ideas to ensure that they are confident in the business that they want to start. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing these three steps to help you get your ideas off the ground, to develop your ideas properly so that you can launch more confidently. And I'll be sharing a powerful approach to build your experience and your credibility, even if you haven't worked with a paying customer before. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I'm Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention coach and a small business strategist. And this channel is dedicated to helping you build a life and business that feels like you. So you're in the right place. If you want to learn how to go from employee to entrepreneur, and you want to learn how to design your business intentionally from your genius zone and also learn human first marketing strategies to grow your dream business. Now, if you're new here, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that notification dinging bell button to be the first to know when a new video comes out every single week. All right. The first step in turning your idea into a business is actually to just start with what you want. Now forget about what other people expect you to be doing or what's a market demand out there in the marketplace. And actually start first internally understanding what it is that you want to experience in your business. How do you want to perform your service in the idea that you have? Who do you really want to help? How do you really want to help them, right? Really start thinking about it first and get real selfish right now in figuring out what that is before you start to validate validated out there in the public world. Now, it's a really good place to start with that because sometimes we forget about what we want. We forget about the, old, the whole, whole purpose too to start our business is to have meaningful work, is to ensure that we're building a business that we'll want to keep and that we are excited to wake up for every morning. Now, if you start it with a general service, so let's say uh, you said, I want to help small business owners to create effective systems in, my, in their business, which is a great start. What I want to encourage you to do is dig a little further to get a little bit more specific. So when you think about small, you want to help small business owners, what types of small business owners, right? Uh, and then effective systems, what kind of effective, effective systems and what are the outcomes that these business owners can receive if they were to get specific types of systems, right, done for them? And what is the benefit? What do they get at the end of the day? Now, thinking about this, these specific areas, um, you know, whether it's people you want to serve or what parts of the service that's meant for you uh, and what problems that you really want to solve in your service, that's going to really allow you to be more focused and narrow in your idea, which is a good thing because it's going to set you apart by making sure that you are a specialist rather than a generalist. Now, it's important for every business to do this, but even more important for new businesses to be a specialist because people don't know who you are just yet. And the e making it easier for people to find you and making it easier for people to remember what it is that you're known for, what it is that you specialize and have mastery in is going to allow them to just remember your brand every time that they have that problem, right? That you've been aligning yourself to solve, right? So be a specialist, not a generalist. And now when you think about all these questions about what you want and what you don't want, you're going to start to actually create great boundaries for your work. You know where you start with your service and you're going to know where you end with your service. So you're not confused about offering too much and you're not confused, right, about just solving every goddamn problem for everybody. That's not going to help your business and it's going to keep you frustrated as a business owner. So I want to hear from you right now. I would love for you to comment under this video uh, and really announce it publicly right now. Announce what you want. Announce to us and share with us what is this dream business you're building? What do you believe is the ideal type of business that you want to belong to and create? And what are the ingredients in your work that is non-negotiable for you to be having the meaningful work that you're dreaming to share with the world. I want you to share it in the comments below. And when you announce it publicly like that, when you get it out of your head into a public forum like this, you're kind of planting a seed of a new truth for yourself. You're declaring that is the work you want to do. That's what you want. Uh, and I think that's a very powerful way for you to turn a fuzzy idea into a real idea that you really want to pursue.
The second step is to use real market research and real conversations to identify problems that you want to solve. Now, it's important to validate your ideas, right, before you invest time, energy, and money into moving it forward. So you want to feel confident that knowing your idea is not only interesting for you, right, which you've discovered on the first part of the advice in this video, but it's also something that other people need than they value, which is going to equal to something that they're actually going to pay for. Uh, many people make this mistake of believing that they have to develop ideas and create like this perfect business offer you know, on their own in isolation before they're allowed to, you know, be talking to people about it, you know, and getting information and feedback because the truth is, is, is actually is not to launch in secret, not to actually keep your ideas to yourself, but involve other people to actually collaborate with you so that you are designing offers, you're designing a business that is something that people actually want and can give you uh, information on what and how to design that, how to design those solutions, what sort of problems you should really be solving that's really valuable to them. So do not do this in secret, involve other people into the mix. So you can get your ideal clients to really help you to build your ideas, to build your offers if you just start asking. You know, it's what I call the asking campaign by talking to real humans, curating and recruiting a handful of people that represent your ideal customers. You might already know them. They might belong to Facebook groups you're in. They might be a colleague, a classmate, someone that's finishing a certification program with you. All these people exist in your network and community at the moment. You just have to think, take, think, take a couple minutes and think about who those people might be or who people can introduce you to, uh, to actually have this conversation with, right? And what's the important part of having these real conversations, not just passively researching what's on the internet, we're not passively just looking at forums and spying on your competitors, but actually getting on the phone, on Zoom, on whatever, however way that you can build one-to-one -one connection, right? And you're able to talk to people about their problems. You're gonna really find the way, the languaging, right? How they describe their problem. Languaging is important because languaging is gonna help you in layman's terms, how to write your sales pages, how to market authentically, how to speak the language of your customer instead of that jargony, markety sales stuff that we really hate, right? The second benefit is you're gonna get to, get to the, the root of the problems. People might tell you that this is a problem they're having. You can ask why they're having it. What have they tried before? You know, how have they tried to solve that on their own? Why do they think they keep getting stuck? What is happening in their reality in limiting beliefs or even skill set, gaps of skills or knowledge that actually is really important for you to realize when you start building your idea or your offer, right? To be able to solve these problems and these conversations are really, really going to help. So identify core problems to solve via real customer conversations. And that's really going to help you to do that. And there's another video that I filmed right here previously on how to use Facebook to actually validate your ideas and find customers. You can watch that as well as using it as a tool for good and helping you to actually grow some of your ideas with people involved in your validation phase and your market research phase. The third step in turning your idea into a real business is to build your credibility and your confidence through testing it first. This is a huge step that a lot of people uh, make a mistake not doing because they go straight from idea generation to launch. <laughs> and if you remember, right, back in the day when you went out there in the corporate world, um, you didn't go from, right, graduate graduation from university or college straight to being CEO. You had to do internships. You had to start from the ground up. You had to test the waters in which area that you want to go into in the industry, right, that you might have be wanting to build your career around. Now, that's no different from uh, what needs to happen in your business as well. We forget the power of of real experience and internships in order to build our confidence to feel like we have something uh, that uh, you know we're confident to offer, we have credibility to offer it, and we have also proof in the pudding, right, of the results that we've created uh, for clients in the past. So a lot of people come to me and they'll say, how do I 
make sure that people are buying when I don't have any customers that I've ever worked with? And that is a very, very good question. So this is what I call the beta test process. This is something that I teach my clients uh, in my coaching programs and the 90 day launch program on how to set up a beta test process of uh, testing out a, a version of your offer or it could be your full offer that you might want to take people through. And that's going to allow you to um, really test out whether or not the process you've created, the offer you've created, right? The framework of how you bring people from A to B, does it work with different people? And what are areas that need refinement? Where are areas that might need improvement? And how are you going to know until you get the feedback from real customers that you're working with? So what a beta test process is, is not an official launch of a program. It's kind of like inviting like founding members, uh, you know, to come, to come with you on this inaugural, you know, soft launch of your offer, right? Of your service or a course or whatever it is that you might be creating. It's kind of a testing pad or a launch pad, right? For being able to explore and, you know, make improvements on the go before you actually officially launch an offer and put a price tag on it. Um, what is going to happen within the beta test process is you're going to be able to feel a real experience of navigating people through different problems. You might even discover that there are templates and resources and tools that you have to create. Um, and that's a good thing because you can actually streamline, you know, all these things in the future because you're going to get all these tools and all these things created beforehand in the beta process. So that when you have official clients in the future, you have all the tools and everything ready to really invite every client and streamline your work. The other part of the benefit is you're going to be able to get early testimonials, right? It's great to have credibility in your work when you're first launching, and this is one of the best ways to do it. So inviting a few people, especially maybe it's the people you interviewed, right, for the market research uh, asking campaign that we talked about previously, right? That may be the people that are actually going to do that beta test process with you, and then you're going to be able to build credibility that way. So um, one of you know one of the stories of my clients in the past, uh, they have done, uh, for example, as a beta test ideas, is they've either ran the full program, right? I myself ran a two month coaching program before I launched my first coaching practice and worked with eight clients full time before I decided to launch. Uh, I have clients that, for example, will run uh, what I call a gateway problem, right? Um, beta program, which is might be actually just one step along the entire journey of the problem that they help solve. So it's one really important gateway problem that is going to be really important for their clients to learn. And they might deliver that in a workshop. They might deliver that in a mini course, right? That can, again, be another great way to test out one part of your offer and see how it lands uh, and, and test it out, you know, differently with different stages as well, right? So beta process can be really refined and, and customized to whatever that's most important important for you to test and experiment with. I hope you found this video valuable in learning the three important steps to turn your idea into a real business. And these steps are really practical and something you can absolutely be doing today. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and like this video for me so that it can be found by more people on the interwebs. And don't forget to subscribe again and uh, hit the notification bell button if you haven't done so, because I do release a brand new video on this channel every single week. And if you know anyone that's going through a business building journey and would benefit from watching this video, you can absolutely press the share button and share it with them. So to dive even deeper into uh, more things to do with starting your business the, in the right foot and to focus on the right things, you can sign up for my free masterclass right here, which is the five shifts that you need to gain momentum in starting your business. So if you've been feeling really stuck, you've been feeling like, oh my God, why can't I just seem to do this already? That masterclass is really going to help to remove some of those obstacles of self-doubt, but also really give you a great plan of action of where you need to focus your time and energy as a new business starting it for the first time. And don't forget to come say hello to me on my Instagram channel here or my Facebook page here where I do some live streams every week uh, and join my community even further and uh, be part of really the cubicle crashing community and all of us supporting each other to build our dream business together. I'll see you next week.